Welcome to the Scholar Diaries, I'm Dr. Cindy Pham and today I'm going to take you guys through my STEM or academic journey. I didn't actually have a traditional pathway into, into academia or where I am today um, and I'm a strong believer that there are many routes to one destination and I am literally the example of that. So I picked up biology and chemistry and I thoroughly enjoyed the content but I'm pretty sure I never thrived in it or did well in it because I don't really do well in a classroom examination um, setting so I don't think I did well at all actually <laughs> but I enjoyed the content and I think I held on to that. In year 12 back in 2011, I did my final year of my high school year. It was actually the hardest year of my life. <laughs> I struggled with my mental health. I was diagnosed with major depression. Um, I'm a survivor. Um, and I was failing all my classes, um, I was doing really poorly and, and I almost didn't get an ATAR score but I think towards the last month of my year 12 year I had like a light bulb moment and I was just like I got to at least try. So I think in that final month, I think in October just before um, year 12 exams I was trying really hard writing like essays every single day or two just pumping it out um, so surprisingly I had a borderline pass um, for my year 12 score it was around 56 or 57 and because I had um, special consideration due to my mental health I think it was bumped up to like I think low 60s and gratefully I managed to get into university because um, I was really broken hearted and deeply overwhelmed that I would have left, like really disappointed my Asian parents um, but that's a whole other video. <laughs> I managed to get into Bachelor of Science at Swinburne University um, and I loved it because I was pursuing something that I was interested in. Um, I wasn't sure if I was good at biology or chemistry and so I majored in both. And then I think um, in my first six months of my first year I was like, mm, this is not really where I want to be for myself. And so I studied really hard. Um, I, I remember going to the library at like, I don't know, odd hours, don't ask me why, but I was at the library at like until 4 or 5 a.m. I think because when that was when it was most quiet um, and it was, yeah, I had zero social life. <laughs> All I did was study, study, and study. Each year of my first year, I was able to transfer out of Bachelor of Science into Biomedical Science. Because um, I think in my mind, uh, for the longest time, I've always wanted to be a pediatrician. So I think I ventured off that way when I got into um, Bachelor of Biomedical Science. Um, and then for the remaining of that six months of that year, first year, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, and at the time I was working in one of my longest jobs, which was um, in pharmacy. Um, so I was a pharmacy assistant and I was like, oh, maybe I could be a pharmacist. <laughs> so I am the first generation in my um, family to go to university um, in my immediate family and so 
if you're an Asian, you only have, I think, a few bachelors that my parents um, exposed me to, which was being a doctor, being a lawyer, or being a pharmacist. So literally, in my mind, I thought those were the only three degrees that were available leading up to university. <laughs> After my first year, I thought that being a pharmacist was amazing. I was working in a pharmacy. Um, and so I picked, I managed to transfer into Monash University doing Bachelor of Pharmaceutical Science. So at the time, um, Monash University allowed uh, pharmaceutical science students to complete their bachelor's and then do like a master's of pharmacy for an for only two years on top so I was like oh that's pretty cool so maybe I'll do that so I got into pharmaceutical science um, and I was working in the pharmacy for that whole period um, while I was studying which was I think over four years and then towards the end of my pharmaceutical science degree I was like nope I don't want to be a pharmacist um, so I had completed my Bachelor of Pharmaceutical Science already and then in my final year of my pharmaceutical science degree, I picked up a research subject um, and it was called Current Aspects of Pharmaceutical Science. <laughs> I received a HD, so high distinction, and I received an award um, for having the highest grade for that subject across the, co across the whole cohort. And I was like, okay, I'm pretty good at research, I think. So that's kind of how my research kind of passion sparked. <laughs> I did take a gap year um, between my bachelor's and my honours degree. Um, so my gap year, I was working three jobs, um, the pharmacy job, um, a desk corporate job, I was tutoring and then I was also volunteering <laughs> at the Murdoch Children's Research Institute um, which is where I got my which is where I completed my PhD. I volunteered there for six months while working these three jobs and I loved it. <laughs> so when I was volunteering I was just gaining some experiences in the lab and the lab work was so cool and yeah, the whole thing just... <laughs> because I did really well in that research subject, I was like, okay, I want to give research a chance. And so I did Bachelor of Science Honours, uh, which is a one-year degree. Um, and I did this in animal studies. So it was um, at Monash University, um, but I was off campus at the Monash Biomedicine Discovery Institute and the Baker Institute. Um, and this was when I was like first time in the lab doing a whole project by myself or with guidance. Um, and it was my experience, my first experience doing animal studies. Um, so I worked with mice. I have always had um, a flair interest in the brain. So my honors project was in neuropharmacology. Um, and because I studied the brain, it was quite brutal for me. Like I found it very challenging um, doing that type of science. I think in my honors year, I was like, yes, I love science. I love the brain, I don't enjoy animal studies. <laughs> I managed to finish it, but um, it was something I knew that I didn't want for myself long term. Um, and then I finished my honours degree, I did okay, I got a H1, which is the equivalent of a high distinction, and um, I was like, yes, I think I'm pretty good at science. Um, so that's how I took a step closer into research.
I wanted to go down the newer route because I think that's what I thoroughly enjoyed. And so I applied for a research assistant job um, at the Children's Cancer Institute, um, which meant that I had to move interstate because I'm based in Melbourne and the Children's Cancer Institute is in Sydney. Um, That was my first research assistant role and I did neuroplastoma research. Um, So this year I upskilled in tissue culture and virology studies um, and I've enjoyed it but I over a long period of time I think I was only in the role for 10 months um, not because I hated it but because I broke my leg um, playing institute netball um, so I had to cut my time short there but maybe that was a blessing in disguise, I don't know. But um, I realised that I love hands-on science, but it didn't really align with like my values, it didn't align with my lifestyle. And so I knew if I was going to pursue science, it would have to be outside of the realm of lab work. So I'm glad I've tried new things to really figure that out for myself. Um, And so because I broke my leg, I was in a PC2 lab and I couldn't bring my crutches in or it wasn't really safe. Um, And even though the institute, they were beautiful and they were very supportive and they were going to wait for my leg to be healed. But I was on crutches for four months and so I... I just um, resigned because science doesn't stop and I felt bad that this project needed to stop because of me so I just resigned and went back home. I was applying to all of these jobs um, and I applied for PhDs for fun because I thoroughly enjoy research. But I kid you not, I had no idea what I was getting myself into. Um, I had no idea what a PhD meant, what it uh, involved, how long it would be. I had no knowledge of that. I probably should have looked into it a bit more. Um, But in my mind, I thought it was just more studying um, and you were doing research. (laughs) So much more than that. So I think I got two PhD interviews. Uh, one was is one was in brain cancer. Um, continued. Con- I thought I should continue my work from my research assistant role, and the other one was a whole new world, <laughs> like a whole new discipline. Um, but it was more aligned with like my pharmaceutical or pharmacology. Um, and molecular biology interests and I was like okay Um, and my supervisor and I uh, we were building a brand new project that aligned with my interests and I was like okay that's pretty cool I walked into both interviews really thinking that I did not stand a chance for either of them because I just applied for fun (laughs) Um, and surprisingly, I got the life course, PhD, full scholarship and top up scholarship for three years. Okay, so that was just like my funding. I also had to try to get into a university um, where I could complete my PhD candidature. I did my PhD at Deakin University School of Medicine and I had completed seven months of my PhD Um, but because I think I was um, off campus I didn't feel like I was as supported as I needed to be um, given that my supervisors were all based at 
at the Murdoch Children's Research Institute and that was where my PhD was also based because that's where my funding was based and so I think after three or four months I was like mm, this university doesn't feel as ideal for me because um, they're so far away um, oh, I think it was like a two-hour drive I decided to transfer my PhD candidature to University of Melbourne, um, keeping the project and keeping my PhD supervisors um, with one um, amendment of one supervisor, and he was completely fine with that. I managed to get into University of Melbourne with a conditional offer that I needed to um, leave my PhD at Deakin University but they were happy for me to bring it with me um, to University of Melbourne and I didn't need to start it again or anything so I basically just moved universities and everything else was the same except for one supervisor and that was the best um, so I completed my PhD at the Melbourne School of Population and Global Health um, at Melbourne University my PhD was completely different to my science background. Everything leading up to my PhD, I wouldn't say it was a waste, but it was a journey into really understanding what I wanted for myself in STEM. So my PhD was in epidemiology, molecular biology, neuroscience and in, and in peds but because it was in epidemiology and biostats I had to basically do um, master subjects so Melbourne University offers free sub master equivalent subjects to PhD students so I did a few of those um, over the first year and a half of my PhD and so basically it was like literally doing a master's but not getting the certificate for it in your PhD but yeah, that's literally my academic journey. You can see that it's been a roller coaster ride. Um, it's not that linear journey that people envision. Um, and you can still get to where you want to be. If you, there's a will, there's a way. Currently, I'm a postdoc researcher um, slash project manager at the Murdoch Children's Research Institute. Um, since I've been um, documenting my final year of my PhD on Instagram and I thought that it would be a great opportunity to embark on my postdoc journey with you guys on YouTube. Um, hopefully my videos to come will provide you with further insights into different topics in education, um, STEM or academia and I'm hoping that or my mission is that it will inspire, empower and encourage the next STEM generations to come. <laughs> if you guys enjoyed that video please like and subscribe to my channel and I will see you guys next time. Don't forget, learning never stops scholars.